What's good everyone? It's a new video. In this video we're gonna do something very useful, which is we're gonna show you how to save anything, Swift UI. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. One way using something called user defaults, which will allow you to save basic data types. I'm talking strings, numbers, arrays, dates, uh, boolean values, and so on. So that's the first type. Sorry, that's the first method. Then the second method using something called file manager. File manager lets you save anything. If it, if if a music file, a picture, a uh, document, JSON, anything. Basically, if it can be converted to data buffer, it can be saved. Those are the two methods that we are going to demonstrate in this video. Let's show you what I have here. Here, I have made an app that demonstrate both methods. I don't want to bore you by uh, coding everything from the scratch and just watch me type. I hate when I watch tutorials when I just watch five straight five minutes of that person types. I hate that. Just I'll show you the end result and explain how everything works. So it's a already made ready app. The app has two views, right? This is the basic. Uh, this is the root let's say path of the app and here I have a tab view and in my first view I'll show you how to do how to use user defaults in the second view the second tab I'll show you how to use file manager so take a look at the simulator this is the user default tab I'm gonna be entering text here and then saving it loading it deleting it printing it and this is the file manager view where I'll be demonstrating how file manager works so same thing download i'll download a picture and then i'll save it i'll save it to the directory they load it and so on so let's see how this looks like let's start with user defaults this is this is the code for the user default view right here i just have the same here i have defined this field that you see in the simulator um i only have one state variable that will hold the text that I want to store and then uh, some methods for storing and loading and deleting and printing so let's uh, first type in something I want to store this text let's say um, tequila since the music is playing in the back and let's see let's take a look at the store function here all that is going on is that I call this user default class standard I create a key for the thing that I want to store this key references what I want to store right my key is called something and this is the data that I'm passing so the data is taken from the text field here and stored data right it's held in the stored data state variable and then here I'm reading that data from uh, from here from the button when I click the button I'm passing this the, the state variable to the save function the same function takes that sets it as the value and this is my key and then it prints the result here so let's click Save my console says that tequila saved with the key something okay now let's load it this is the load method this is what it does it just calls the same class user defaults and it asks for the key something right tells me give me the uh, give me the value for uh, for that for that key give me the value for that key something and then the value is will be tequila but let me restart the app to show you that it was stored so I'm restarting the app building from the scratch um, if I click load it will return tequila so it just uses this user defaults now let's delete this from the storage to delete this is what's going on in the delete function I'm uh, I'm calling this method on the 
main thread, I guess you call it. I'm not good with terminology, sorry about that. I think they call it the main thread. And here I'm saying delete the object, delete the key, uh, delete the key something and its associated value. So here I tell them what key I want to delete and its value. And then it will just delete it from storage. So delete. I deleted the string from local storage. Now, if I attempt to load it, it will throw no data. Because what I did here is that I set a, um, I set in my load function something that says, if the key something does not have any data associated with it, just change the text to no data. If it has something associated with it, then just display the value for that something. Okay, cool. Now, I wanna show you if I, what happens if I restart the app. Will the data still be there? I load again, it says no data because I deleted it. Now, uh, let's populate another value. Let's do something again, vodka, right? And I'll save that. I wanna see what that looks like in this user default class. So, I'll print it. And here, it will print everything in this user defaults class. Let's see what we have here. I have a bunch of system stuff, you know. Um, Apple passcode keyboard, I don't know what any of this is. Apple language, English, I have no idea what any of this does. But the, all that matters is that here you can see that I have a key called something and its value is vodka, which I just stored earlier. Cool. Now, here is the logic behind this method. All I'm doing is calling user default standard and there's a method called dictionary representation which returns all the keys and the values that are that can be found in user default as you can see here cool so that's how we store things in uh, user default you can use it using user default this is good if you want to store a user ID let's say um, or maybe like video game data, uh, anything, something simple, right? Uh, if uh, maybe you want to store the status of the user, if the user is subscribed or signed in, it's good for that too. Anyways, as long as string, a bool, a date, a number, a array of one of the values that I just mentioned, uh, you can store it using this. Okay, cool. So that's for user defaults. Uh, if you have any questions on that, feel free to drop it in the. Uh, in the uh, com in comments. Now let's move to the second view, file manager, and see what's going on there. This is the code for the second view. Same structure. I got the view. I got the body here with all the buttons and uh, the text field. Uh, and I'm gonna download the picture. Right now, it's not displaying any picture in this view, right? But if I had a picture stored in my state variable, it will display it. Which is, this is this is the code that does that. So here, what I will do is I will, I already populated the text field with some image URL, and I will download the image. So this is the code for downloading image. Uh, don't worry about that too much. We'll probably do another video for how we downloaded the image. It doesn't matter. We're not here trying to explain how images are downloaded. We're trying to explain how they're gonna be saved. Uh, we'll, yeah, another video for another day. But anyways, I download the image using this method. Click download, and the image appears here, right? But now I wanna store it in files here. So how would I do that? I will use a library called File Manager take a look at my save image method which is being called here in this method I'm calling the file manager class I'm uh, selecting my root directory and then I'm, I'm creating a new path for the image that I'm gonna save I'm just creating the path I'm not saving the image I'm just creating the path which will which will the image be saved to so this is my path, it's gonna be the root path with image.png appended to. And then 
I take my image, this is the image, this is where the image stored, this is my state variable, right? Here, okay? So the image that I download, the image that I downloaded got stored in this UI image state variable, okay? We, now with any image, with any image uh, variable, you have this method called PMG data that turns that image into data buffer, right? And with any data, you have a method called write that writes that data into some path that you provided to. So I give it this path, and then I populate this path here, and then it will save my image to this path. So if I do that, save the image. And I go check, it prints out in the console that the image was saved. Now I go to files and check. Now a new file, a new folder has been created for my app, it's called save stuff, okay? I check inside this file and here's my image. Okay, now I can do the same thing, but to a directory. For that, I'm doing the following. I'm doing the same first. Uh, I'm doing the same thing, which is I create a path for the root directory here. I specify the path of the root directory, and then I say, "Hey, if this directory does not exist, create this directory. Create this directory path." So here, it just creates that. Look file manager dot default dot create directory this is the directory dot path and here I um, just save it and I say that it's successfully been created because I can't save an image to a directory that has not been created yet you have to create the directory then save the image to it once I create the directory it's dir, dir underscore path then I can create another path inside that directory for saving the image which is what I'm doing here then the same thing happens. I did this, I do the same. I save it the same way that I saved within the save image function, just with a different directory, different path. Okay. Now let's uh, try that and see what happens. Save image to a directory. I have a button for that. It says that it's been saved. Now if I check the files again, I see that here that a directory has been created and the same image is inside it. Cool. Now. Uh, let me show you what happened. Let me show you how to load that. That's the cool part, right? If you want to do offline loading, let's restart the app and I'll show you how to do it. For that, all you gotta do is just specify the path just like this, right? And really, you can just uh, you can really just do this too. Image path, just to simplify the code. Make it one line. There we go. And I specify this path. Now I go here. Let me restart my core just to show you that it's working. I go over here. I load that image. It loads it from the directory. And I have another method that does the same thing, just loads the image inside a directory. All you gotta do is just append the directory path to it instead of just dot image. It will be directory then image, but the same thing. I'll simplify this code for you as well. Here we go. Image path, image path. Now let's restart. Okay, load that image from a directory. It does the same thing. Okay, now you might be asking, well, Nawaf, how, uh, how can I delete that now? If I want to delete it from the directory, we have a method for that too. So I will uh, show you inside files. It, the image is there. Now if I do del delete, der delete image, this is what it will do. It will get that path again. And it will, let me simplify this again to make it one line. Do image path just like this. Here we go. Restart. And now I will delete it. Delete the image. Now if I check over there, the image is no longer there, it's been deleted. Now if, what if what happens if I want to delete an image inside a directory but keep the directory? I will do the following. I will specify the directory for the image just like this.
simplifying my code. Then um, right here, restart the code, do it again. Delete image in directory. Now if I go over here and check, see, it turns from one to zero. There's nothing, it's empty. Now I wanna delete the directory, okay? So for that, all I'm doing is just, same thing, let me simplify code again, sorry about that. I hate writing like 10 lines for the same thing. I prefer to just simplify my code and reduce the lines as much as possible. Okay, this is the directory path, simple. I just put it here and I do file manager default remove item. Save it. And then reload. Here's the directory. Now you see it. Now you don't, the directory is gone. Okay, cool. It's very simple using this. I, I use file manager to, I have an app that lets you, um, I have an app called OmniCard that lets you create virtual business cards. And the, those business cards have uh, images in them, like logos and custom QR. Uh, link in the description in case you want to download, in case you're interested in that app. Uh, and the way that I'm storing those images for those business cards is here using this file manager I just store them in the files so that I can load them offline instead of calling my server every time to load those images It's very useful if you want to keep things on the device and load them faster offline even when there's no internet instead of just having to call on the server every time to um, To uh, to get to get the stuff cool Nice that's how you can save really everything you can save anything with file manager even JSON. I'll do the JSON save. I'll just how to save JSON in another video because it's a little bit complicated, but uh, it's possible. Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that this was useful. I spent so much time trying to figure this out. So um, I'm going to zip this project and upload it in Patreon. So if you're interested in getting the full code for this app, uh, it will be available on my Patreon. Subscribe, support the channel. Uh, okay. See you in the next video. I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.